I had the whole of today's episode filmed like two weeks ago while we were in New Zealand. We shot it in Wellington Botanical Gardens and it looked great. And then we got home and through nobody else's fault but my own, the footage now does not exist. I deleted it. By accident. Do as I say and not as I do. So now we're going to film it in my not so scenic studio. Recently I got my hands on the Yashica 635 and it's a medium format camera. I have never shot medium format before and to be honest that was quite a daunting prospect to me but all in all I really enjoyed the experience. I will show you some pictures that I took at the end of the video so stick around for that. But this got me thinking about how much film photography actually taught me about the fundamentals of filmmaking. I have had the chance to shoot on both 16mm and 35mm motion picture film and that also taught me a lot too. But Film stills are a little bit easier to access for most people. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The first reason why I think it's good to pick up film photography is the fact that you get to learn how to accurately expose an image. Too often I see people who are new to filmmaking or photography just using their monitor as a guide as to what their exposure is going to be. And that is not really good practice because all monitors are calibrated slightly differently and you could be getting varied results depending on what you're using. Film, however, allows you or at least forces your hand into trusting your calculations and actually learning about the fundamentals of exposure. So the exposure triangle, we're talking ISO, shutter speed and aperture. You basically learn how all three of those work in conjunction to get a proper exposure. Now this might be a really tough process for you, especially if you don't know too much about exposure beforehand and if you've got a camera that doesn't have a built-in light meter. Now this camera here, the Canon AE-1, that is a 35mm stills camera and it does have a built-in light meter so it's a little bit easier to get a readout as to what my exposure will be for a shot. I tend to use this in conjunction with the medium format. I found that this would give me the readout and then I'd adjust accordingly for the Yashica and that tended to work well. Otherwise you're going to need a light meter. And then that is a whole other kettle of fish to learn about but it's all a learning process and it is really valuable knowledge to have. How to use a light meter is a good skill. There are light meters that are less complicated than this one. This is a cinema light meter by Sirconic, so it is laid out a little bit differently than those light meters, but it still is the same thing. So you can take an incident reading and you can take a spot meter reading. But the key here is by using a film photography camera, you're learning how to expose and how to use the exposure triangle to get a correct exposure, which are all fundamentals of filmmaking and all knowledge that you need to progress. My second point and my final point, which is gonna make this video rather short, is that film photography kind of makes you a perfectionist. You see, with digital, you can delete. If you don't like it, you delete it and then you start again. But with film, it's there. Once you take a shot, it's there. And because of the cost of buying the film and processing the film, you think about things a bit more than you would if you're just taking a still on your digital camera. You know, it's not until you hear the sound of film rolling through a motion picture camera right next to your head when you're operating, or you hear that click of the shutter, that you realize that you've discovered the most anxiety-inducing and satisfying sound ever. Bit of an odd mix. But in all honesty, having that value behind it makes you contemplate different angles that you wouldn't have thought of before if you were quickly snapping a shot. You, you think about everything a lot more deeply. I mean, you should be doing this anyway when you're filming. You should work out the best angle possible for whatever situation you're in and what that means to your final product. What is that going to convey to your audience? But film kind of forces your hand in that manner. It, it gives you the opportunity to finesse that because you want it to look as perfect as possible because that's all that's going to be there. You're not going to be able to edit it much afterwards and you're certainly not going to be able to delete it. And in doing that, you're also going to finesse your lighting and also your lens choice. So you see, it's a snowball effect. You're going to try and finesse everything to make it as good as you possibly can, thus learning more fundamental skills. In saying that, you also do kind of find the best things to film. You're always searching, you're training your eye to find the beauty in something and find the perfect angle to capture that beauty. So all in all, shooting on film gets you thinking creatively. It trains your eye and it teaches you about the fundamental skills of filmmaking like composition and exposure. So why not shoot on film? So thank you very much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday. 
Oh, and actually stick around a little bit because I'll put photos at the end of this video so that you can see all of the work that I've done over the past couple of weeks with a couple of friends. We did some stills and went out in the city and did some modeling photos. So I hope you enjoy those. Also, uh, don't freak out in a couple of videos time when I don't have any hair. I'm actually doing a thing in Australia called the World's Greatest Shave. I don't know if they really do it internationally, but what we're doing, me and my friend Oprah, I'll leave her channel link in the bio, in the bio, I'm not on Instagram, in the description below, I will leave her channel link. And if you want to donate to us, I'll also leave that link there as well. We're gonna shave our heads for blood cancer research. It's gonna be a cold winter. Anyway, bye.